So we're going to be talking about imaginary numbers today. Um, if you see the first problem in your packet, it's already done for you, but I just want to go through a couple of things with you. So remember, if we're trying to solve for x, we try to get x by itself. So as it shows in your packet already, you just add 25 to both sides. And when you do that, you get x squared equals 25. Now remember, to get rid of a squared term, we would do the square root of both sides. Remember when you take a square root, though, we need a plus or minus. So the square and the square root will cancel each other out. We get x, then we get plus or minus, and then the square root of 25 is 5. And again, if you look on your packet, you'll see those are the answers. So similarly, with number 2, we're going to do the same thing that we did in number 1. So everybody should be taking notes in their packet. So we're going to add 8 to both sides, just like we did with number 1, except we added 25 to both sides. Okay, we're going to get x squared equals 8. And again, to get rid of a square, we take a square root. Don't forget, though, anytime you take a square root, we need a plus or minus. So that's going to give us x equals plus or minus radical 8. Now, radical 8 can break down because there are two numbers that multiply to 8 where one of them is a perfect square, and that would be 4 and 2. So, bring down that plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, and then radical 2. So we, again, have two solutions x equals plus or minus 2 radical 2. All right, so let's move on to number 3. So we're going to follow the same procedure as we did in number 1 and number 2, and we're going to get that x squared by itself by moving the 9 over. So we're going to get x squared equals negative 9. Same thing as number 1 and 2. We're going to take the square root, and we're going to have a plus or minus in front. So the square and the square root will cancel each other out, and we get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9. Now, we kind of have a problem here because we've never had a negative underneath the square root before. And up until this point, you've been told we can't have that. So what I want you to do is I want you to look down below numbers 1, 2, and 3. There's a box, and in that box it says i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay? So i is considered what we call the imaginary unit. And basically, i stands for the square root of negative 1. So I want you to watch this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go x equals plus or minus. So I know that usually we're trying to pick two numbers that multiply to the number underneath the square root, right? In this case, negative 9. Well, wouldn't you say then that 9 times negative 1 would give us negative 9? Okay, so then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the square root of 9, which I know is 3, and then let's look at this. The square root of negative 1 is i. i, again, standing for the imaginary unit. So x equals plus or minus 3i would be our answer. So anytime we see a negative underneath the square root, Basically, what that's going to be is the imaginary unit i. So let's look at a different problem that also deals with that imaginary unit i. So look at number 4, and again, don't forget that you're taking notes in your packet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down this 2. Now the square root of negative 49, now normally if it was the square root of 49, we would know that the square root of 49 is 7. So what I'm going to do is when I have a negative, I can simply say to myself, well, what two numbers multiply together to give me negative 49? And you can see that 49 times a negative 1 will give me negative 49. So I'm just going to bring down this 2. I know the square root of 49 is 7. And now remember, look at that box right above number 4 and 5 in your packet. The square root of negative 1 is i which is the imaginary unit. So when I multiply all of these together, I'm going to get 14 i. And there's my answer. 
So let's try another one. Let's look at number five. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in number four. So I want to break down negative 18. Now this one's a little bit different because 18 is not a perfect square. So just think about if it was a regular 18 and not a negative 18. I would break it down to 9 and 2, right? So I'm going to break that down to 9 times 2 because that will give me 18. But I need negative 18, so I'm going to tack on the square root of negative 1 to that. Now think about that. So you've got 9 times 2 times negative 1. And when you multiply all three of those, you're going to get negative 18. So now let's one by one. We're just going to break everything down here. So the square root of 9 I know is 3. Now the square root of 2, that doesn't break down, so I'm going to leave that. And I know the square root of negative 1 is i. Alright, well, if I look at this, I can see that I can take this 3 and this 3 and they'll both become 1's. Okay? So we can simplify that. So then basically what I have is 2. I'm going to bring that i in front and then my radical 2. And there's my answer.